Hi there. In this lecture, we're going to see Magnus Carlsen in a very, very funny game against an FM who will remain anonymous or just with his nickname Godzilla. So <laughs> Magnus Carlsen is playing white in the 2018 Lee Chess titled arena. This is the ninth edition and he plays knight c3. So this is a very funny use of knight c3 at a bullet time control. And it kind of shows that Magnus Carlsen doesn't really need opening theory. He can play a lot of funny stuff and get away with it. Let's see, e5. Now here, actually, if you look at the Lee Chess opening database, true knight c3 exponents play knight f3 with an idea that actually we can get a very quick semi-open D file and we haven't got a target on E4. So this, these are interesting positions. So there's, there's a kind of independent value here of knight f3. This is actually considered a mistake and it's tempting to transpose you know, into normal stuff. But why play knight c3 if you don't want an adventure of kind of uh, unique independent positions? And we can get the adventure with knight f3. So in fact, Magnus does play knight f3. We have knight c6, but the adventure takes a funny turn here. Magnus actually plays knight b1. Yes, there's a cruel intent here, knight f6, to basically give the opponent quite a lot of uh, tempo odds. So this, this knight goes back to g1. We have d5 and knight f3, bishop c5, and funny enough, knight g1 now. So Magnus hasn't really developed any pieces. He's made use of the knight c3 opening <laughs> to kind of give odds here to his fide master opponent, who is over 2600 on bullet at the time of this game. So we now see e4. This seems very, very logical. I mean, this is classical development. Everything's out and about, classic center. What could possibly go wrong here? We see e3, black castles, and now d4. We see e takes d3, c takes d3. And at this point, yeah, engines suggest, you know, black is nearly minus three in terms of everything. You know, even though black's not material up, it's like this huge lead development here. We have d4 and now e4 is played. The funny thing is, engines suggest d4, but with a very cruel clinical follow-up and actually this is a lesson for engine analysis in general that if we can't follow up the way an engine would follow up we kind of we're giving the opponent a kind of closed more closed position here this is a, a concern we have rook e8 and now bishop e2 and this is the point that if you if you're not aware of the follow up of this d4 uh, the advantage could really slip and it does with knight d7 black had to it seems play knight takes e4 to actually make sense of this lead in development requires actually a peace sacrifice, which is not actually a risk in this position because of that lead in development. It's a risk not to try and sacrifice a piece. So this position, for example, knight f3, white would in, in a theoretical sense be in a world of pain here. That's losing immediately for white. But let's say king f1, you know, then there's a concession. You know, we can play d3 here, and this is very, very dangerous stuff. For example, this position, Knight b4, and with that f2 target, you know, we can take out h3 as an example and try and checkmate on f2. And this gets very painful for, for white as these pieces show true, you know, venom. White's disconnected, basically. But black has, in, you know, invested the piece to get this scenario, which would be absolutely crushing. But you see, black didn't really do that. Black played knight d7. So that's interesting. The position is, is visually more closed in nature now. So the development tempo given, it, it's less meaningful now. Without that peace sacrifice concept to back it up, the, the whole point of d4 in terms of that very specific idea has been missed. We see knight de5. If bishop f8, knight bd2, a5, and white castles, this position should be still better for black. But we have knight de5, and actually white's kind of nearly equalizing. This, this is about equal now. Where did it all go? <laughs> White just closed the position. So yeah, th there's a, a kind of story there that actually, you know, when we when we follow 
uh, you know, strong moves. We really need to have specific ideas in mind, not to just have the position close up on us. So, you know, sometimes we might need to sacrifice material to exploit extra development tempo. This is kind of a vivid demonstration of what can go wrong. So now f4, and we have knight c6. If knight f7, bishop f3, white is slightly better here, actually. So we have knight c6, e5, a5, knight d2, bishop e6, and now a3, a4, bishop f3, queen d7, king h1, and now bishop f8. Black still had a chance to be better again with knight a5. That b3 is a bit weak. If rook b1, queen b5 looking at d3, there are some weaknesses here, and black should be better here. But bishop f8 was played. And now, from this position, Magnus is able to start an attack. Rook g1, we have b5, and now g4. This has a very nifty idea in mind, after f takes g4, to keep maximum tension in the position. Guess what Magnus plays here? Okay, rook takes g4 is played. Yeah, sacrificing the exchange. We have king h8. If bishop takes g4, bishop takes g4, this position, there's queen e2. And white is fairly dominant here. White has the advantage with that nice g-file row to play with, the bishop power, and black has compromised the light squares. This is another downside of d4 earlier, you know, that the light squares, the adjacent light squares are weaker. Okay, so overall, actually, white's better than that. So anyway, king h8 was played, rook g2, rook a b8, bishop e4, knight e7, and now queen h5. This is a very direct attack. Bishop f5, and now knight f3. This next move actually makes black's position even worse. Bishop takes e4. If g6, knight g5 is actually possible. Looking at to checkmate, if g takes knight f7 is checkmate there. And if h6, the queen pokes on h4 with advantage. So bishop takes e4 was played, d takes, and white is actually at plus 4 now. White's completely turned the tables. So yes, <laughs> you've got to be a, a bit kind of cynical about closing the position without the correct follow-up. So we see queen c6, knight g5, protects e4, threatens mate again, h6, knight f7 check, king g8, and black's actually getting demolished now, knight takes h6 check. So yes, that pawn is pinned. So if queen takes, we're just taking here, thanks very much, that pawn's pinned. So we have king h7, knight f7 check, king g8, f5, g6, queen h8 check, king takes f7, and now e6 check, and black has to resign. If queen takes e6, yes, we're a queen, you know, we've won the queen, and the attack still rages on here. For example, here, bishop h6 check, queen e6 check, rook f7 check, queen h3 check, and, you know, the black king's not going to last long. So I thought this was a shocking game. I was just, you know, trying to investigate knight c3 with Magnus Carlsen on various nicknames. And it seems the majority of his games are on Dr. Nicktestein nickname. So it's a very, very funny game example, which shows actually a development odds, an extreme piece development odds, how we can totally misplay such situations, starting with a move like d4. If we don't know we're going to crack this setup with a brutal peace sacrifice this is you know we can actually just lose the plot totally <laughs> like this game after 97 it starts to lose the plot so yeah i thought this was actually entertaining and instructive and shocking a full range of emotions tell me uh, you know your range of emotions and if you are going to do this kind of peace development odds at bullet chess say and see if you can win from such positions where you kind of potentially close up the position later and come back with a vengeance. If you can do that, put your game in the comments. But yeah, I thought I'd share this one with you. A funny little game. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. So yeah, development, if not uh, exploited correctly, can sometimes mean very little if the position closes, basically. Okay, so here, yeah, this was the start of equalizing with knight f3 now. Okay, thanks so much.
All comments, questions, likes and subscribes, really appreciated. Thanks so much.